The operator of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant is moving forward with plans to dismantle the cover of one of the reactor buildings. It's part of efforts to decommission the facility. The cover was erected at the number one reactor building after the March 2011 accident to prevent radioactive material from dispersing. A hydrogen explosion occurred in the building at the time of the accident. Tokyo Electric Power Company plans to remove the cover in order to clear away radioactive debris in the upper part of the building. It will also remove spent nuclear fuel stored inside. Over the course of a week, workers will use a remote-controlled crane to spray chemicals over the debris. This is to prevent radioactive dust from spreading. The process of removing the cover will take more than one year. Company officials say they will increase monitoring of radiation levels during the procedure. TEPCO says a test last year showed that radioactive materials didn't scatter when part of the cover was dismantled. The utility initially planned to start the process in July of last year, but work was delayed after the removal of debris from another reactor building in 2013 caused radioactive dust to spread. <laughs> Officials at the UN nuclear watchdog say it's important that TEPCO maintains dialogue over decommissioning with local residents and other stakeholders. The International Atomic Energy Agency has released a report on the decommissioning of Fukushima Daiichi. It's based on findings made by a team of experts that visited Japan in February and April. The report acknowledges that progress is being made in decommissioning the plant, but it says the situation at the site is complex and that challenges remain. It offers advice, including considering possibly discharging treated radioactive water into the ocean. Criticism has been mounting over a delay by TEPCO to disclose that contaminated water from the rooftop of a reactor building had been spilling into the sea. The report says the delay was likely the result of insufficient coordination between officials at TEPCO headquarters and workers at the plant. It urges greater efforts to disseminate information properly. で、点41マイクロシーベルトパワーです。0.42マイクロシーベルトパワー。0.33マイクロシーベルトパワー。0.33マイクロシーベルトパワー。霧島筒子の前の放射線量は胸の高さで0.48マイクロシーベルトパワーです。0.47マイクロシーベルトパワー。0.55マイクロシーベルトパワーです。0.56 マイクロシーベルトパワー。0.61 マイクロシーベルトパワー。0.62 
0.61 マイクロシーベルトパワーです。Disabled people in Japan are finding it easier to get work. Labor ministry officials say a record number of mentally and physically challenged people are being employed through job placement centers. Almost 85,000 people with disabilities found jobs from April 2014 through March this year. That's up more than 6,700, an increase of 8.6 percent on the previous fiscal year. It's the highest figure since 1970. Around 34,500 of the newly employed were mentally disabled. Their numbers jumped 17.5 percent. The figure for people with physical disabilities dropped half a percent. More than one third of the new jobs were in medical care or welfare services. Other employment sectors included manufacturing, wholesale businesses, and retail. Ministry officials say more companies have been looking to hire competent personnel since quotas for employing the disabled were mandated by law in 2013. Taiwanese officials say they're checking food from Japan much more closely. They impose tougher regulations and inspections. The Japanese agriculture minister says they had no scientific grounds. Taiwanese authorities banned food from parts of Japan in 2011 because of the Fukushima nuclear accident. The produce from those areas showed up a couple of months ago. That pr prompted consumer groups to call for tighter restrictions. All food imports from Japan now have to carry certificates of origin. Some have to be checked for radiation. Japanese Agriculture Minister Yoshimasa Hayashi called the new rules extremely regrettable. Taiwan acted unilaterally, without any scientific grounds. Hayashi said he'll urge the Taiwanese to retract their new restrictions. He said he may file a complaint with the World Trade Organization unless they act. Time for a view from the top, where business leaders explain how they stay ahead of the competition. Today we hear from Elon Musk, the pioneering CEO of U.S. electric car maker. Tesla Mortars. Musk has turned his attention to other ventures, including commercial space exploration. These days, he's busy promoting batteries strong enough to power your home. Musk also wants to make his mark in Japan. NHK World's Rosa Sobrino has this report. The innovative tech entrepreneur recently surprised the world with a bold announcement. He announced that Tesla will manufacture rechargeable batteries that can supply household energy needs. So we have to we have to come up with a solution. That that's the that's the missing piece. That's the thing that's needed to to have a proper transition to a sustainable energy world. Demand for home batteries is rising around the world for use as an emergency backup power source and to store surplus electricity generated by solar power systems. Musk says Tesla's new products are very different from existing batteries in the energy market. Which are typically expensive and bulky, and it will help with the world's transition to sustainable energy. The way I see the long-term future of the world is like we have to say, okay, everything has to be renewable and sustainable. So, in order to achieve a sustainable energy future, in order to, to have a good future, essentially,、um, we have to have、uh, sustainable power generation, which I think is primarily solar, but combined with also wind and geothermal and hydro. And then you've got to combine that with、uh, battery packs. You've got to be able to store the energy you produce during the day,、um, so that you can use it at night.、Um, and then you combine that with electric transportation, and now you have a fully sustainable future. Tesla's battery is unlike anything that's ever been produced. 
Previous efforts by rival companies have been boxy and sit on the floor. Tesla's battery, however, is designed to be mounted on the wall. And previously, if you look at, at, at home battery packs, they're big and they're heavy and they're on the ground and you need a whole room, special room for them. Um, and they tend to be usually lead acid and then they, they sort of smell bad and they look bad. Um, and so that's why people don't, and they were expensive. That's why people don't, don't want them. One of the most notable features is the price. A model with a capacity of 10 kilowatt hours will sell for $3,500. That's much cheaper than comparable batteries produced by Japanese firms. Tesla executives are now planning to build a huge battery factory in the U.S. state of Nevada. They hope to cut costs by expanding production, and they aim to begin selling their batteries in Japan soon. Tens of gigawatt hours of demand, I suspect. Maybe hundreds of gigawatt hours of demand just in Japan alone. We're going to offer our product, and if it's the right product, people will buy it. Um, and then probably others will, if ours is successful, others will copy it. And then uh, they will get closer to our product. But that's fine. Um, I'm just saying, like, the future, in order for us to have a good future, we have to have, um, in my view, solar power plus batteries plus electric cars. And then it's good times. Musk changed the way people thought about electric cars, and he slashed the costs involved in launching a rocket. Now he appears to be on the verge of transforming the market for rechargeable batteries. Rosa Serino, NHK World, Los Angeles. Members of the UN Committee reviewing the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty are engaging in a conflict. Chinese delegates are rejecting the way the Japanese want to word the final agreement. They say the reason is rooted in their shared wartime history. Japanese delegates said the agreement should include a call for world leaders to visit Hiroshima and Nagasaki. They said that would help them learn the inhumanity of nuclear weapons. For further education for future generations in particular on nuclear disarmament naturally leads to an idea that one of the most effective ways to that end is to the visit to Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But a revised draft did not contain that call. Delegates from China had persuaded the chairperson to remove it. Delegates from some countries in Europe and Africa supported Japan. They said people should gain a broader understanding of the inhumanity of nuclear weapons. Chinese Ambassador Fu Zon said the Japanese were free to invite world leaders by themselves. But he said his country could not allow them to include that call in a deal at the non-proliferation talks. He tied the Japanese emphasis on Hiroshima and Nagasaki to what he suggested was a wrong interpretation of history. Why should they force us, countries like China, they have denied repeatedly on their history of invasion of other countries. Delegates will keep talking next week. Bomb survivors from Nagasaki have taken part in a concert in New York. A review conference of the nuclear non-proliferation treaty is underway in the U.S. city. They sang to appeal for a world without nuclear weapons. The choir Himawari or Sunflowers sang a song called Never Again. The song calls for the abolition of nuclear weapons to prevent a recurrence of the devastation. The choir joined the local high school students to sing, We Never Forget. The lyrics include a pledge to never forget the damage that was inflicted on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I renewed my determination to abolish nuclear weapons and to make a peaceful world. I thought it was really powerful and a really good call to um, disarmament. The choir is expected to sing at the annual peace ceremony in Nagasaki on August the 9th, the anniversary of the atomic bombing of the city.